Welcome to the Private Practice Startup Podcast, where we help mental health professionals grow their dream practices and live a life they love. We chat with successful private practitioners, business coaches, and marketing experts, bringing you tons of practice building tips. We invite you to take advantage of our private practice paperwork and our signature marketing e-course. And we have a gift for you. This is the exact methodology we use to create our six-figure private pay practices and have helped many other therapists do the same. Go to privatepracticestartup.com and on the home page, click the button to download a free copy of your dream private practice playbook. Now on to today's episode. Hey everybody, welcome back to another episode of the Private Practice Startup Podcast. You asked, we are delivering. So today you guys were all curious about how do you grow a multi-state online therapy private practice? And of course we have the perfect guest uh, to talk about that. But before I introduce her, um, and she's been actually a repeat guest, so that's very exciting. She's back with us, I believe, for the third time. So you might have heard her before or know her from the community. Um, but before I do that, we hope that you joined us last week as we got to talk with Anna O'Brien and Jim Pascarelli. Um, and they've created an amazing platform for therapists um, to help build therapist referral connections that benefit not only the therapist, but the client. So this is something new in the industry, something very well needed. Um, Anna and Jim share their stories about why, why it's important, but they also talk about the benefits of the platform, which was really cool because I don't know about you, but when I have referred clients, I don't have referral people for, it's usually posting in Facebook, then people are mentioning someone's name and then you have to do research and is this person really a fit and it just becomes a burden sometimes for the therapist, although we want to do well by clients or potential clients. Um, they've really streamlined this whole process. So definitely listen. Obviously, it's a benefit for you. So sign up for the platform as well, um, but definitely check it out. So listen to that. And we hope that you guys are having a fantastic day. So I want to share with you a little bit about our um, guest today, Mrs. Amber Lida. How are you? <laughs> I'm great. How are you? Doing all right. I'm glad to have you back. Kate is not with us today. She's actually opening her third group practice location in Plantation, Florida. Poor thing was coming off of a cold from last week. I know that she was exhausted. I had reached out to her during the middle of the day yesterday. I'm like, how's it going? And she sends me a picture of her laying on the floor. <laughs> She's like, I'm exhausted. I'm like, I'm sure you Aww. are because I know how this goes for you girls. So that is why Kate's not here in case anyone was wondering, but that means I get Amber all to myself. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> so who's Amber? If you don't know her, Amber is a licensed psychologist um, and owner of the Online Therapy Academy. She left her nine to five job job. No, she left her nine to five um, to live better, a bolder life for starting and starting an online only therapy practice way before the pandemic. So Am- Amber has been a pioneer um, in her own right, not because of the pandemic, but because that's what she wanted to do. It allows her to work a uh, work a life that she loves and still live a life that she could save her. Um, now she teaches other therapists and has been doing that for years on how to exactly do this through her courses, her coaching, her free offerings, um, like her online therapist, Facebook group, her podcast and her YouTube channel, which I think is new since we've seen each other last possibly. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Awesome. So we're going to be diving into, like I said, how to have a multi-state online therapy private practice. So there's a lot of new laws and interesting things that have kind of gone on, have gone on over the last few years that Amber is going to share with us all about. But before we do that, let's take a quick moment for our sponsor, and then we'll dive right into this important content. As a therapist, I can tell you from experience that having the right EHR is an absolute lifeline. I recommend using Therapy Notes. They make billing, scheduling, note-taking, telehealth, and e-prescribing incredibly easy. Best of all, they offer live telephone support that's available seven days a week. Look, don't take my word for it. Do your own research. Therapy Notes is the number one highest rated EHR available today with 4.9 out of 5 stars on Trustpilot and Google. Go to therapynotes.com and enter code PPS as in private practice startup and receive a special two-month trial absolutely free. And hey, if you're coming from another EHR, no worries. Therapy Notes will import your demographic data quick and easy at no cost to you so you can get started right away. Trust me, don't waste any more of your time. Go to therapynotes.com and enter code PPS for your two-month free trial. Amber, so great to have you back. I guess before we dive into the content, what have you been up to these last two years? 
Oh my goodness. You know, we were talking before we jumped into the podcast about like work-life balance. And I think I've got, I I hesitate to even say this because I don't want to jinx myself, but I feel like I finally got it dialed in. So the business is doing well, the coaching, the courses, the blah, 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 all the stuff. And life feels really good right now. So I'm just excited to have things in balance and to get to play outside of work and, you know, do the things that I talk to all of my students about doing of being able to chill or go to the tiki bar or ride the bikes around town and, you know, have this uh, amazing therapy practice or amazing side hustle or whatever it is that they want to do. That's awesome. Congrats. Like that's, I don't know. I feel like I'm forever trying to figure that out. You and I were just talking about that before (laughs) we hit record that I feel like I've been, I've primed myself to be a workaholic since I was young doing all the things and really just being in reflection of that. Like literally these last two days, like, what am I doing? Yes. You know, so my pattern tends to be like work excessively hard, burn out, do nothing for a while and then like right back into the cycle. So I'm really, really hoping that I found a way to just kind of keep it low key and consistent instead of this whirlwind. Yes. Oh my gosh. That you're describing my pattern. What's been happening in the therapist community in the online world with like multi-state reciprocity and licensing. So let's kind of start there. Yeah. I think that therapists started to get pretty excited when they saw that they could see clients you know, when the pandemic hit and they moved online, like, oh my gosh, I can see clients outside of my city. Wait, what? And then, you know, we just keep seeing opportunity. Like, wow, that really opened up the opportunity for me to see more clients, better fit clients. Well, gosh, what if my client's traveling for vacation? Or, you know, what if they or I move? Am I able to keep seeing them? Or what if I have this amazing niche and I want to market to people who are outside of my state who fit my niche and can pay my private pay rates. So there's been just this kind of growing interest in practicing across multiple states. And I think the pandemic really moved states to have to faster than they expected to. I, I'm sure everybody remembers that suddenly all of these laws got loosened that were once really tight And you can check out, um, I always forget the name of it. It's the Epstein something or other, Epstein, Becker, and Green 50 State Survey to see where your state and your profession may be with regard to what the laws are currently because they keep on changing. But I think that many states that had a high need for therapy and not enough therapists started thinking, we might be if we just kind of let people who are licensed elsewhere practice here then we can get some of our our people's needs met. So that kind of started a, a ball rolling and it's only kept moving in that direction. I hope it keeps going in that direction. That's awesome. What are some of, you know, what are some of the concerns, right? If you're wanting to practice in different states, what are the concerns? I guess pros and cons, we can kind of talk about both of them. Yeah, well, I'm glad we're talking about this up front because everybody gets super excited about the idea and maybe don't, totally think through the implications. So the biggest thing for me is the clinical care. So let's say that I am getting to see somebody in South Carolina um, and South Carolina has a mate. Well, let me just tell y'all right now, Vermont, Florida, South Carolina have easy peasy ways for you to practice in those States. If you don't live there, you don't have to get licensed there. There's a quick little application you fill out super low fee and bam, you get to practice in that state. Sounds great. But what happens if I'm seeing somebody in that state and I start to become concerned that they need involuntary hospitalization? Well, the way you do that in a different state is probably different than how you do it here. And even the threshold that you would use to decide like, okay, can I begin this process is slightly different in different states. So you do have to think through how would I handle emergencies what are the differences in like when you would break confidentiality? Is there a duty to warn or a duty to protect? What's the process by which I would handle that? And these are pretty easy things to iron out as long as you put in, you know, an hour of labor to do the research and figure it out ahead of time. And it's interesting as you're talking, like, I'm grateful that we had the podcast right before you, 
right? The one that I was talking about, like the new platform about being able to refer to other therapists because, you know, Amber, even you say like, even though you might be in the same state, so Amber and I both live in Florida, <clears throat> but Florida is like nine hours long if you drive it or maybe longer if you're going down the Keys. And the reality is, is like whether in Orlando or Pensacola, yes, the state laws might be the same for therapists, but I don't, my you know, local resources are are local. It's not in Orlando or Pensacola or wherever. So we still have to be mindful of that, right? And knowing a little bit more about the resources and information there, um, you know, what is the local crisis line or, you know, do we check and make sure that if, okay, if I really want to target Vermont, <clears throat> okay, I can target the whole state, but how am I going to resource this information? So what are some of your suggestions about that? I think it's really helpful to get in touch with a therapist on the ground in the area. It can be just very difficult to find accurate information online. And when I was living on the East Coast, Southeast Florida, we had mobile crisis response teams. So I didn't have to initiate an involuntary hospitalization if I didn't want to. I could call this crisis team in. Or if you work for a university counseling center, a lot of times you have to decide, do you or the the university police initiate an involuntary hospitalization, for an example. So finding people on the ground that you can talk to and figure out what those resources are, I think is super helpful. I had a good friend. She's just as neurotic as I am, if not more so. She did all the legwork ahead of time to you know, make sure her butt was covered. And lo and behold, a crisis happens. And she's like, okay, I know what to do. I have all the documentation. She follows the process that's outlined online and nothing happens. None of the sequences that they describe, like fax this and the police will call you and blah, blah, blah will happen. None of it happened because they didn't follow their own procedure that was online. That was not how you did it anymore. Nobody manned the fax machine and they just hadn't Mm. updated it. So I think having somebody on the ground is probably the easiest way. And therapists are helpful people. If you just literally psychology today, somebody and call or email them, they're going to be like, sure, here, here's the link. Right. Gotcha. No, those are important things. Like, and I think, you know, when we teach <clears throat> our course about like the telehealth consent and we talk about abuse reporting and also knowing your laws, like there are some um, states where, you know, quote unquote, a minor child or, or let me say it this way, <clears throat> that a child um, between the ages of 16 and 17 can seek therapy without the consent of, you know, their legal guardian, but you have to know those things. You know mm-hmm. what I mean? Um, mm-hmm. And also just knowing the numbers, resources, you know, um, reporting abuse, those types of things are really important to know. So I like that you say friend a therapist, <laughs> friend a <laughs> local therapist. That's a great idea. What else about um, practicing across multi-state? So there, there are several ways that you can go about doing it. And just a caveat from the get-go, just because you're able to practice in multiple states doesn't mean that your practice will be full. You still have to know how to market. Simply being licensed there or able to practice there doesn't change the fact that you have to know how to... If you're not full in your own state, you're not going to automatically be full because you are able to practice in other states. So just heads up, you still got to know how to market. Now, there are multiple ways that you can see people in other states. I mentioned with Florida, Vermont, South Carolina, you're able to just literally Google uh, out-of-state telehealth provider and that state, and you'll see documentation come up. And I gave you some info for your show notes where you can link to some of this that tells you like, hey, here's the process. It's super easy. Just follow these links, pay this fee, you're good to go. Pay attention because some of them have deadlines and some of them don't. So Florida. You can practice forever and ever. In South Carolina, Vermont, there are some limitations and, you know, it can, it can, uh, what's the word that I'm looking for? Like phase out. So maybe you get six months. And I think what they're trying to do is like move you towards getting licensed there eventually. So just pay attention to the nitty gritty. But what's super freaking cool is that you no longer have to think about getting licensed in every single state you want to practice in separately which is expensive as heck. And if you have ever gotten licensed, it's a big pain in the butt. I mean, it's a lot of documentation and how many practicum hours. And I mean, I don't even want to think about it. It gives me the hives. (laughs) So we are finally moving in the direction of more nationalized kind of practices through something called compacts. And compacts are just contracts between one or more states where they're saying, you know, 
we looked at your criteria for licensure. It's, it's close enough to ours. So if somebody is licensed there, we agree that they can also practice here. Unfortunately, it has to go through every one of our professions separately, which is super annoying. So psychologists have their own packed, compact. Social workers have their own. And all of them are in different stages of progress. So, of course, psychologists have like mad lobbyist money compared to our other therapist professions. And so they're moving along faster. You know, I think that they have somewhere between like 18 and 26 states that are signed up. So if you're licensed in one, you can practice in all of those states, which is just crazy town. It's awesome. Yeah. Yeah. So let's just take a quick moment for our sponsor before we continue our conversation. As a therapist, you're probably too preoccupied with your caseload to want to think about bookkeeping and taxes. Herd is a full service accounting software platform built specifically for therapists that helps you track and improve your practice's financial health. Regardless of whether you're a seasoned clinician or you're in the first year of your practice, HERD will help you identify areas for growth and streamline best financial practices for your business. When you sign up with HERD, you'll work directly with financial specialists to track your income and expenses, file taxes online, and grow your business. You'll also receive financial insights such as profit and loss statements and personalized monthly reports. Say goodbye to poring over spreadsheets and guessing your tax deductions or quarterly payments. Focus on your clients and HERD will take care of the rest. Plans begin at $199 per month for solo practices and $299 per month for group practices. Schedule a free 15-minute consultation at joinherd.com. That's joinherd.com. Are you tired of running to the lobby to see if your next appointment has arrived? Would you like a more discreet, stress-free way for your clients to check in? Take a deep breath. The receptionist for iPad empowers your practice to create a zen-like check-in experience. This episode is sponsored by the receptionist for iPad. It's the highest rated digital check-in software for therapy offices and behavioral health clinics used by thousands of private practitioners across the country, including many who are just getting started. The receptionist for iPad is a simple, inexpensive way to allow your clients to discreetly check in, to notify providers of a client's arrival, and to ensure your front lobby area is stress-free. The software sends an immediate notification to the therapist when a client checks in and can even ask if any client information has changed since their last visit. Start your 14-day free trial of The Receptionist for iPad by going to thereceptionist.com slash PPS, as in private practice startup. And when you do, you'll also get your first month for free when you sign up. That's thereceptionist.com slash PPS. So I was thinking about that. So with the compacts, like then how does that work? Are you signing up? Is it a national, well, quote unquote, national, whatever database? Share with us. Great question. Great question. It is a national database. Right now it's separated by profession. So counselors have one, social workers have one, psychologists have one, marriage and family therapists are working on getting one. So you do have to sign up and you basically go through the same process you would go through to get licensed in a state but you do it one time with this one organization and you pay them one fee. And then it's sort of like a little, a little green check, like would be on Twitter or blue check or whatever the heck that thing is. Right. The verified check, whatever it is, (laughs) that thing, (laughs) then you're cool to practice in all of those other States. One thing I haven't looked into and, and I should is CE requirements My educated guess is that if your CE requirements are met for the state, your originating licensing state, then they're going to be like, yeah, you're cool across all of these with maybe the exception of like the laws, one credit CE that we all have to do to make sure we know our own state laws. But that's my guess. I'll do more research and get back to you. Awesome. No, that makes a lot of sense. So I'm glad that you had mentioned about, you know, reminding therapists that, you know, even though you can have access to more states, that doesn't mean you're void of marketing. Because I think a lot of times we think that like, okay, well, I'm just going to open up to this wide audience of more people. Yay. You know, I'll have more clients, but that's not necessarily the case, right? Um, you be able to serve more clients that you love working with, but you're still going to have to market in those areas. Let's touch on the marketing just a little bit because I know therapists are wondering, how do I do that? <laughs> <laughs> yes. yes. 
Well, you know, there are lots of different ways to market. So the good news is that you can do something that's aligned with your interest and your skill set but you are going to have to do something. So there are pros and cons of each, right? You could go after SEO. The the iffy thing with SEO is that it's usually geographically localized. It's really hard to compete on like therapists near me across the entire United States. Like it's, it's going to cost you more money than you'll make in your practice. So if you're going to go the SEO route, it would make most sense to go that route if let's say... You know, as a Florida licensed person, I know half the people here live in New York part time and Florida part time, right? So if I got licensed in New York, your compact or whatever, as a sister kind of site, then I could locally target certain places in New York where I knew my clients were likely to be or where there was enough money to be able to pay my rates or or whatever. That would work in the SEO department. I think content marketing, which is just being helpful out loud on the internet, is a really smart way to market across the entire nation because people are searching for the helpful content you're putting online rather than searching for a therapist in Charlottesville, Virginia, you know? So making helpful stuff, putting it online and using keywords that people would actually find, like how to heal from a narcissistic partner, right? (laughs) I think that's a super popular thing right now for people to find. You're creating content like blogs or YouTube videos or um, Reddits, I love AMA Reddits as a way to market, then people are likely to find you based on your content rather than your geography. And the last way that's coming to mind for me is networking. And if you have a niche, this is a really easy way to network. I have a friend who does um, therapy for people with pelvic floor disorders, and she does behavioral therapy, targeting anxiety and and that kind of thing. That is so dang niche that she can literally look up the doctors in any state who help people with that issue and just contact them directly and make connections. I love that. It's interesting. Um, You know, I had shared recently and I had done a webinar with Ernesto Segas Mundo about real estate investing because some therapists know and some don't know that the last two years I've been working full time in our real estate business and really bringing that up. So we did real estate investing for therapists. And it's interesting, like what you're saying about marketing because their um, real estate is also localized, right? You have a local mm-hmm. market. It's, you know, what they share about nationally. Yeah, that's the national, but that doesn't mean it's happening locally. So interestingly enough, of course, I'm a marketing geek. So I'm actually utilizing some of the things that you're talking about, right? So we're part of BNI. So that's Business Networking International. Um, and it's a whole international thing. But I said to myself, you know, where are people still buying short-term rental vacation properties that have money? New York, right? And there's actually um, a website that tells you what counties are spending the most money coming to your county. So what wow. I did is I went into, yeah, I went into the BNI app and I looked for all of the realtors in that area, pulled 250 of them, created an introduction email and giving them some examples of some short-term rental properties we have here in Florida, right? So the idea is um, to be able to connect with those realtors specifically in New York, like you said, right? Thinking that they have clients that are looking to invest best here in South Florida, because we know that the data says that, you know, New Yorkers are still the top, you know, state buying here in South Florida. So it's important. It's a great, like, I love the example that you use and there it is kind of at play just in a different market Mm -hmm. and how to be able to utilize that. So we're in it right now. We haven't sent them out. We're almost ready to send them out. So I'll let you know how it goes, but I love that concept. And you have to really understand how you are as a therapist, right? Like you're mentioning that therapist that has behavioral exercises. That's amazing. Um, You know, there's a few therapists, which I think is an awesome niche about like financial coaching or financial Mm -hmm. therapy. Mm -hmm. That's an amazing niche. You know, are you reaching out to couples counselors and other areas um, and offering this because it's a super cool niche and maybe you have an e-course or a program or whatever that you can market to them. But, you know, when it comes to marketing, you're always paying either with your time, your money or both. Yes. And it has to be a, con- yes, it has to be a consistent, constant effort um, to do that and be able to do that and see how it works. And of course, always tracking track to see what's working. Then you will know where you want to spend your time and money and where you don't and where you want to shift. So freaking masterclass on marketing right there. I mean, (laughs) y'all rewind, listen to that again. I mean, like scrappy marketing, be just be strategic. Just use that brilliant brain that you develop throughout your life. You know, like you went to grad school, y'all are smart. 
So just mm-hmm. think outside the box, like, okay, so I don't have that specific of a, a niche. I help people, you know, sometimes with trauma, sometimes with anxiety, perfectionism, little baby narcissistic traits, you know, functional narcissistic traits. So like, where do they hang out? Where would they go? What sort of doctors would they see? You know, a lot of my clients go to meta spas. So if I'm targeting some, you know, local area in another state, that's the kind of stuff I'm going to look for. Like, what are the local meta spas in that area? You know, like, let me contact them. Let me see what kind of people they're seeing and see if I could send my people to them, be of service. And when you are of service, then you're going to find that clients end up coming to you without you having to be salesy, markety, schmarmy. Yeah. And so, I mean, the other thing, I mean, we're doing it right now. We're on a podcast, right? So that's another great way to provide valuable content. And again, if you have a niche or you're more of a coach or whatever, or you're looking to expand your online practice, like this is a great way. And the cool thing, if you haven't done podcasts, you don't have to have five gazillion talks. Like you can have one topic, like Amber was saying, like how to heal from a narcissistic partner. And then you just show up on different therapist podcasts in the areas that you're targeting about that. And I remember even before the pandemic, even before online was very popular, I think I was doing some guest blogging for um, a couple's blog or something like that. But I would have people contact me from other states. Can I work with you? And at that time, the answer was no, um, because I couldn't, but it does work. And if you're going to do it consistently to create some momentum, it will definitely get there. So good mm. stuff. Mm-hmm. So what are we missing on the more strategic part of the non-marketing stuff? Because I think you and I could go into that and you're funny, like about a masterclass. I mean, like, I think I could just show up to a marketing masterclass without anything planned and just talk. Yes. <laughs> I mean, other people might fall asleep, but I would just... I would love it. No, they would be taking vigorous notes. I think the last piece about practicing outside your state that I didn't mention to think about is just temporary licensing. So, you know, I had a client who was going to Missouri and going to be there for a year, but then coming back to Florida. Well, it didn't make any sense for her to have to start a whole new relationship. So I got in touch with the board. I explained the situation. And they're like, yeah, that's cool. Give us a hundred bucks and we'll give you a stamp that says that you can practice here for a year. I'm like, okay, sweet. You know, like like, therapist, like passport for online therapy practicing. I love it. (laughs) Exactly. So contact the different boards of places. If you have a client going on vacation or traveling for a long time and just find out and you can look at their website. It is hard to interpret the websites sometimes. I actually know somebody who I'll give you her contact information she is, uh, her side hustle is doing that work for you. So she just gathers all the information, gives you her interpretation, all documented with all the links and all the things. So I'll, I'll wow. find out her contact info and, and give it to you. She's awesome. And she just likes that nerdy stuff. So, you know, she enjoys it and you don't send it off to somebody else. <laughs> Back to the point. Some <laughs> of the places will say something like, um, you know, you get 52 days, something like that. Know that those 52 days don't need to be in sequence. So that could be one day a week for a year. And if you saw all your clients from that state on that one day a week, well, then, you know, you've got a part time or full time practice in that state for a year. So just pay attention to that language and know that it doesn't have to be sequential. Nice. That's really, really helpful. And for therapists who are kind of like you, Amber, living in various states, what benefit does that bring and what you know are you doing? Yeah, well, so most states, almost all states, the smart states, the rule is that the therapy is happening where the client is. So if I was only licensed in Florida, but I was spending time in, let's say, Colorado, because that's where I'll be spending some time, I would be able to continue seeing my clients regardless of where I could be in Portugal. I could be wherever the heck I wanted to be and see my clients because the originating site is where the client is. There are a few states, I'm not going to name names, pain in the butt states, that you need to be licensed both where the client is and where you are. In which case, the temporary license or one of the compacts or you know, if you happen to be in Vermont, South Carolina, or Florida would serve you as kind of a shortcut to being able to see them. Very cool. Good stuff. Very helpful information. So if we were to kind of like summarize everything we talked about, like look at the compacts Um, you had mentioned about the really cool website, Epstein Becker, 
green green 50 state survey that's constantly evolving. So check that out just to see where your state is or the states that you're looking to get, uh, looking to see clients are. And what else are some, I mean, I know we talked about marketing. <laughs> what were some of the other <laughs> highlights that we want to make sure people... The last thing is find out your professional body's compact website and follow it closely because it's evolving and it's evolving quickly. And so, you know, as a psychologist, it's totally worth the, maybe it's a thousand dollars, but you are able to practice across 26, 18 states, however many are approved at this point and more are getting added constantly. So you definitely want to pay attention to the evolution of your compact and anything you can do to push that along is helpful to all of us. Sometimes there are votes or petitions and things that you can participate in. And then the other piece that I can't speak to, because it's not my area of expertise, but you should definitely be aware of is how does it work with insurance? Because it varies by insurance policy and by state if you're taking insurance. So way easier to do private pay in this way. But if you take insurance, Kim Tolson, K-Y-M Tolson, runs a group specifically about insurance and telehealth, and she may be able to help you out with that. Awesome. And Kim was actually just on a podcast we did as well. So that's cool. Um, And Kim is also, she started a podcast called, I think, The Traveling Therapist. Yes. You've probably been on it. Have you been on it? I haven't yet. No, but I'm I'm addicted to to it. it. (laughs) Addicted. Her first few episodes, I was like you know, binge listening to. They're so fun. And the experiences she gets to have are amazing. I mean, she's just such a smart, savvy businesswoman. Awesome. Does she talk about like what she's doing and like where she's going and her experiences? Yes. How cool is that? And she interviews other therapists who are traveling and like, how are they managing it? And there are really funny things that you just don't even think about that you, you know, you have to kind of manage when you're traveling that are unexpected. Well, so when I was, when I was traveling a couple summers ago, one thing that I hadn't thought about was like your check-in time at the Airbnb is usually, you know, after four, but your checkout time is like 11. So in that window, unless you want to sit at a, you know, parking lot outside of a coffee shop, you're not going to have internet, you know? So you have to think about the timing of when am I going to see my clients and make sure that I'm in a place and settled and all of that good stuff. But it's it's funny. Her adventures are are fun. And she does a really nice job too of not making it seem like it's all glitter and unicorns. You know, there there are challenges as well. Yeah. Very cool. So Amber, what do you hope that people take away from your message today? Mm, well, what I really hope that they take away is the better you can get yourself out there online or in person. I don't care how you're getting your message out there the more people you can serve and help. And the people who are ideally fit for your unique skill set will find you, whether it be in your state or out of your state. And if you're doing a really good job getting your message out there, you are going to have people outside of your state contact you and want to work with you. So knowing how to navigate making that happen is important. Very cool. Well, it's such a pleasure to see you and have you. I always love when you're on our podcast or just taking a few minutes to catch up. Um, always love connecting with you and Startup Nation. We hope that you join us next week. Um, as next week's podcast is exactly the podcast I was referencing that Kim Tolson, as well as, um, Tammy Berman and Tara Arquejos were on where we talked about how to get off insurance panels. So although nice. Kim actually helps therapists with insurance panels, she was a wealth of knowledge on that podcast, as well as Tammy and Tara talking about the steps that they took, the mindset issues and all of that, that I'm sure that you can relate to. So if that's one of your goals here in 2020, getting off insurance panels or creating a hybrid practice, um, definitely do not miss that podcast. And we hope that you guys all have an awesome and inspired day. Um, Thank you so much for being a loyal listener of the Private Practice Startup Podcast. I can't believe we're well into our 300s and we've been doing this now. This is moving into our seventh year. How is that? That's crazy, right? Incredible. What a gift. (laughs) well on that note amber um i hope you guys have an awesome inspired day and we'll see you next time take care everybody thanks for joining us on the private practice startup visit the private practice startup.com for awesome resources free trainings attorney approved private practice paperwork and so much more 